Yesterday's video, we were getting geared up to go into the mountains when my dog ate a bunch of raisins and ended up needing to be at an urgent care for 48 hours. So I slept in the vet parking lot with the sound of gunshots going off nearby, woke up and broke the dog out of the vet to then go get prepared to head into the mountains as soon as possible. We ended the day watching our little fox friend out the window while the sun set over the mountains and we're hoping to see him again this morning to get some crisp footage of him. So today we're waking up at over 13,000 feet with intentions of making homemade Chick-fil-A sandwiches in one of my favorite campsites in the Colorado Rocky Mountains at the end of the video. But before I can make my favorite baked chicken sandwich recipe and play some video games peacefully in the mountains at the campsite, we've got a lot of stuff to do, we've got a lot of things to get to prepare, and this is what our day looks like getting ready to do that. Cassie was up and at him early this morning looking for the fox out the window, and I kept tossing and turning until I heard some voices that sounded like they were right behind my bed, and they were. It was a nice couple getting a picture of being up at the pass. As always, you have to give a good look out the side window and soak in the view, especially when we're parked somewhere as cool as this before we get out of bed. Definitely one of the better views I've had out the window, but the van is a complete mess, so I need to tidy things up, and then I need to get the dog outside. We're going to go for a nice little walk on the snowpack up in the mountains. Got Cassie out for the morning bathroom break. Hard to beat this spot to go to the bathroom in the morning, huh, Cass? I don't know if it's just me, but the sound of snow crunching underneath your feet is just like such a relaxing noise, especially when it's not actually cold. When we were in the sunshine walking, it was really beautiful out this morning. All I had on was a flannel. It was probably in the 40s, but it felt plenty warm. And as much as I was enjoying our winter hike, it was about time to turn around because I got chicken sandwiches on my mind and we got a lot of stuff to get done before I can even start making the chicken sandwiches. So we went a little bit further and then we turned back and started making our way towards home. Go, Kizzy, go! Kizzy, that's a tree. We made our way back to the van trying to take in the views as much as we could on the way back. Cassie had a good time on the walk and so did I. I was surprised at how hard packed the snow was still. Being that we're on top of the pass, we need to make our way down at some point today to go to the grocery store and get to our campsite to make dinner. But first I need to do a handful of dishes from last night's supper and just need to tidy up the van in general after a road trip day yesterday. It wasn't long after us getting back to the van and me starting to tidy things up that Cassie started whining out the window and I figured that that could only mean one thing. So I was just doing dishes and then Cassie started freaking out and it looks like our little fox friend is back. Oh look, he's gonna go right up to this guy. He's like, hey, do you got any food for me? He's like, hey mister, I know you don't see me yet, but I'm hungry. That guy sucks, he ain't got no f <laughs> That guy takes off his glasses, like holy shit. Is that a fox? He's like, hey man, I'm just looking for some food. You don't got no food? Well, that's interesting. He just came putzing right by right here. This fox is locally famous to say the least. I watched so many people take pictures of him in just like the half a day that we were up here. And it's clear that he's fed by humans on the daily just by how he interacts with humans. But it was kind of cool watching such a wild animal act so domesticated. And he looked to be pretty healthy so hopefully people aren't giving him too much junk. And that leads me on to this next clip that I was scared to share. Because I knew that you guys would get all triggered about it and be yelling at me not to feed wild animals. But... I watched countless people feed him stuff out of their vehicles that was probably leftover Taco Bell and who knows what. So eventually he came putzing over to the van, I'm sure he could smell all of the food inside of the van and I sat outside with a piece of food in my hand for a little bit and I know it's stupid but I don't even care, I was really hoping to be able to get him to eat out of my hand. You could tell that he was extremely friendly and scared if anything and I wasn't going to put this footage in because I figured that it would cause an uproar in the comments and you guys can yell at me in the comments and state your case that it is not good to feed wild animals and I 100% agree with you and you guys can rest assured that I didn't give him a whole ass bag or anything i just tried to lure him in i just wanted to be able to say that i've hand fed a fox i've hand fed some cool little chipmunks here in winter park 
they sat right on my hand and just ate out of my hand like a pet gerbil for like a minute straight. I really wanted to create that core memory of a fox eating out of my hand, but I couldn't get him to do it, so don't yell at me. I didn't feed him. He didn't eat out of my hand. I didn't touch him. He clearly eats from humans every day on a daily basis. So it's not just me. It's, it's not like I'm 10 miles out in the national forest and some wild fox. Sadly, this fox, I'm sure, is living off of an almost primarily human diet by the way he interacted with humans. And with as busy as this mountain pass is, it's very clear that this guy is a local celebrity. So after enjoying one of the coolest moments I've had in a long time, just interacting with the fox and being so up close to such a beautiful little creature, it was time for me to take Cassie outside, let her go to the bathroom before we head down the hill and start driving our way into town to get all the ingredients we need at the store to make our chicken sandwiches. Cassie and I enjoyed a little bit more hiking. I just wanted to make sure to see if she didn't have to go to the bathroom before we got back on the road because it was going to be a good hour or two on the road heading to the grocery store next. And we really just tried to soak in the views, watching some clouds roll over the mountains and just enjoying the area before we take off and head down the hill. Hey. Cass. Hey. <laughs> you do ego, Cassie! Thanks to our magical app. You can download that right now. It's free and it takes like 30 seconds to get that on your phone. Here's Billy Currington. It don't hurt like it used to. Pay 99 Wasn't expecting any traffic in the mountains, but looks like we might have had a little crash up ahead or some road work or something. I 100% thought I was gonna get rear-ended by this UPS truck behind me. Cassie's like, let's get the show on the road, baby. After getting through the little bit of traffic and road work that they had going, it was smooth sailing other than just dodging all the potholes in the road to their next destination. First, we we're going to be stopping here at Murdoch's to fill up our uh, propane tank. We are completely out of propane and cooking off of solar for quite a while, so we need that to run the oven for our supper tonight. So we enjoyed the mountain views around Murdoch's and just tried to take that in for a minute before hopping back on the road to head to the grocery store. And on the way to the store, it started just barely raining, which slowly progressed into heavier and heavier rain. And in typical Dan fashion, I let my ADHD control the day, so I bailed out on going to the store last second, drove by it, and went to Dollar General instead. I didn't need too much for the meal tonight. I have mostly everything I needed. Just need a couple small things like ketchup, flour, and some snacks. So ran in Dollar General and got that, and then hopped back in the van and started making our way back to campsite while enjoying the rainy drive back. You really don't see rain in the mountains too often, so you really try to soak it in when you do. Has been complicated. Some days it's empowering. After playing our 
favorite game of dodge the pothole we were just about home to our campsite for the night and i figured i'd show you guys what the back half of the van looks like when i'm going on a little bit of a bumpy road because it's a little bit chaotic I'm gonna cook some chicken sandwiches. Hopefully they turn out something kind of like Chick-fil-A sandwiches, but baked in the oven, have some sort of crisp to them. I don't know how much of it I'm gonna film, but here is as much of it as I do film. Got out the two pans. Let's turn on the two lights for the kitchen. There we go, much better. Got out a bowl for the egg. Need to get out the chopping board for the chopping. Oh no. Bada boom, bada bing. Shut the cabinets. Get out the other things. Next was move the TV from there to there so we can have some TV going while we're making food. Cassie actually, believe it or not, loves to watch TV. So whenever I'm doing some sort of long process like this in the kitchen, not only do I like to have something in the background, but I like to put something on so Cassie has something to watch. Although she's gonna be pretty busy here. We're back at her favorite spot. It's changed a little bit. They did some renovations here, so our spot's changed a little, but this is definitely Cassie's favorite spot. She's always so excited to get up and go outside in the morning. Huh. Yeah, I wonder if the chipmunks are still around here and Mr. Moose. All right, so before I start getting chicken involved, I would like to be able to have some hot water in hand just to be able to rinse off my hands, rinse off the knife and stuff as we're going. I get kind of weird about the chicken juice. So I need to take this thing around back and plug the water heater in because it is not plugged in right now. So let's run around back, try to get as least muddy as possible. We almost lost our sun chips. Training. Fucker. God damn it. Okay. Need to pull this heavy guy down. What a life. It's beautiful. All right. Training. Let's turn this. Turn it on. Scoot it. Plug it in. Turn it to ideal temperature and then um let it do its thing 1200 watts getting pulled that's a lot of power man oh had to beat the door okay back to it 
Continuing on the thought of not getting chicken juice everywhere, I figured I should crunch up these french fried onions before I start messing with the chicken at all and get those just ready to go. So I smash up these french fried onions the best that I can and then I add like two or three tablespoons of all-purpose flour into it just to help it stick to the chicken a little bit better. It's finally time to do the damn thing. First I just going to wash off my hands, take advantage of that hot water that I got cooking up. And then we start just prepping the area. We use tin foil to contain the mess a little bit. And I always trim off my chicken pretty good. I don't like a fatty sandwich. It just kills me when I bite into a sandwich and it's a bite full of fat. So per typical, we're watching Donut Media while making supper. If you guys have a favorite YouTuber, let me know who they are in the comments right now. I've been checking out a lot of them that you guys recommended on the last video. And it's really cool seeing the different channels that I would have never stumbled across. It really ended up being the perfect night for firing up the oven. It's our first night camping in the mountains, and it ended up being a dreary, rainy, cold night. So it was a perfect kind of vibe of having the oven running while the rain was hitting the roof. The sound of the rain hitting the van in a rainstorm combined with the smells of my favorite meal cooking in the oven and the warmth coming off the oven was truly just like the perfect mix. One batch of the chicken sandwiches are already cooking for probably 10 minutes or so. The other one's ready to go. I'm gonna clean up the rest of my mess here. Save those for probably making some green chili or doing something that doesn't take much chicken. And then it's time to feed Cassie the dog. We're just waiting for the first batch of chicken to get done. Usually Cassie would be pretty pushy by now asking for her food, but I'm just waiting for my supper to get done and then we'll eat at the same time. First batch of chicken's in. It should be done any minute, but we're waiting for that to finish up and then we'll toss those in. I think I'm actually gonna check on the chicken right now. So one of my bacon sheets I have like a rack on it so that it keeps the chicken off of the actual bacon sheet and in my oven I only have like one cooking rack. They going back in. But below the cooking rack is like a tray maybe you'd call it. It's like right above the open flame. You're not supposed to put a pan on it. But I figured since that I have a rack on my pan I could put the pan directly on like that super hot tray but it wouldn't really matter. It wouldn't fry the chicken since the chicken's lifted off of the pan. And it worked great. I was cooking both pans of chicken at the same time, but the only thing is the bottom of the pan had some crud on it and that was getting extremely hot. So that was burning off and smoking out of the oven like crazy. So we had to open up the windows and get the air vent fan going even faster than it already was with the oven going. And, and while the chicken crumbs are smoldering, the rain was slowly starting to turn into sleet, which then would turn into snow overnight. I went around back to turn off the water heater so I don't drain the power of public T2200 down to 0% on accident. And then we just patiently waited for the food to get done. I played a little bit of a game that I used to play called RuneScape. It's a super nerdy game from like 2007, but it's kind of like a nostalgia trip for me. And this meal is like a slightly nostalgic meal. So I always like to kind of combine this meal with playing some video games, so just a total feel-good kind of night. So we killed some hill giants while we were waiting. Cassie was pretty pouty about the van being all smoked out, but she managed.
So as everything's cooking, I'm just fine down guy. I'm watching some donut media and a variety of other car channels on YouTube. It's kind of smoking the van out a little bit. I might have mentioned that already, but I'm also playing a little bit old tour RuneScape. Super nerdy game. I get on it like once a month, like two times a year or something. It's a game that I played a ton during childhood. One of my good friends that I have in real life is getting into it again. So we're grinding with a little bit of RuneScape. Kill some giants, you know. Oh, oh, wasn't done with him yet. One thing throughout the build that I spent a lot of extra time doing that I wondered if it was worth it was sorting out all of the dark colored pennies and all the bright colored pennies. Um, I was just going to do a random at first, but there was such a massive difference between the two colors that I, I thought that it would be better safe than sorry. And then I ended up doing a whole pattern with it, and I think it turned out really cool. Helps make the van look potentially even longer yet, and it kind of mimics the design in the floor, which you guys can never see because the rug now on this side it's the same thing it's, you can notice it in different lighting situations better yeah you can kind of tell there it's like sleeping outside right now and it looks like the van's about to light on fire but it's not there's just some crumbs burning on the bottom of the pan and it's making some smoke and don't bag on me in the comments usually i don't get the nasty cheap buns but it's like part of this meal i just it's just how i eat this meal it's just best with those i have to do it it's the one time i cheat and don't get like whole wheat whole grain whole dog and as you can tell i got a little carried away playing my video games and when i went to check the first batch of chicken they got a little bit charred but the second batch turned out perfect it was absolutely best case scenario chicken was still really moist on the inside but it was super crunchy on the outside we had our fake chick-fil-a sauce and uh ketchup i dip everything in ketchup and i don't know if it's weird to dip chicken in ketchup some people tell me it is but i think it's delicious let me know in the comments if you guys dip your chicken in ketchup to let me know if you made it this far into the video i highly doubt anybody watched 22 minutes of this video but if you did comment whether yes or no you use ketchup on chicken the sandwiches turned out absolutely amazing they're a little bit healthier than the chick-fil-a just because they're baked i know that the topping is already fried beforehand so it like isn't that much healthier but not dunking your whole chicken sandwich into a pot of grease definitely has to make it a little bit healthier so after a long day, I was very much ready to eat my food. I'm glad that I got at least a few clips of this chicken once it was done. I'm actually pretty impressed with the amount of clips that I got. I'm really bad about by the time the supper gets done, I just put the camera away and I eat my food and I just want to call the night, especially on nights like this where it's like 8 or 9 p.m. by the time I'm actually eating. But this is one of my all-time favorite meals. I was really stoked to make it my first day back at one of my favorite camping spots. It was just a good night overall, and we were very much overdue for just a genuinely good day and good night in the Rocky Mountains. It had been a hectic past couple of weeks. If you guys haven't seen our previous videos, go check them out. The first start of our van travels were pretty rough, and we're starting to get ourselves back on track now. After I finished eating the food, I cleaned up for the most part. I didn't do any dishes. It was probably 10 p.m. by the time I finished eating. I crawled into bed listening to the sound of the rain hit the roof. Me and Cassie snuggled up and we called it a night, hoping that the sleet slash snow that was kind of coming down while we were going to bed was going to keep coming throughout the night and turn more and more into snow, which I think that you guys are going to be stoked to see the next video when we wake up to a little bit of a dusting. If you like the video, click the like button. If you like the content in general, click the subscribe button to see more. The next video will be an actual snowstorm, and I'm really stoked to be able to make some content on that before summer came to the mountains. And once again, if you guys watch this video all the way till the end to this point, put a smiley face in your comment. That'll let me know if you watch the video all the way to the end. Thank you so much for the support on the previous videos. I hope to see you guys in the next video, and have a great day.